Everybody. Welcome to episode number 11 of the Abnormal Hour. I'm your host, Alex Rennie, with my partner, Frank Hillebrand. 11. <laughs> 11. Number 11, baby. So we hope you enjoyed last week's episode and the first ever appearance of the Thunder Brothers. How exciting. Wow. So I've cool. seen it. I've seen it six times. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to see it another six at least. And just so you know, we didn't divulge this in the last episode. It wasn't done when we did our official podcast recording. We, <laughs> it was in the works, <laughs> but it wasn't complete till after. Yeah. So. That's uh, show business. That's show business, <laughs> baby. But that was cool. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, and if you're not, you probably noticed something's a little different. That would be my background. <laughs> so... With my new job as a bus driver, I now wake up at some obscene hour of the morning and I need to go to bed early. And my wife was working in our bedroom. That is where I am now. So I've officially lost my office. She's gone in there and I've moved my stuff in here. This partition is blocking our bedroom set behind us. And so now for the foreseeable future, this is Alex's new background. Anyway, just wanted to explain the new background. So. Well, with that, we're now going to go back in time to last week's whiteboard and cartoon. Okay, boys and girls, welcome back to our whiteboard recap. Here we have last week's idea of the arranged marriage gone wrong. We were going to do an arranged marriage from two different walks of life, although they are both monsters, but they still are quite different. And uh, yeah, there's quite a cycle we went through going from stage to stage to stage, and it was a circus Whoa. dating app, and no, 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 <laughs> wrong, Game wrong, of Thrones, all starting wrong. from the woman who married a tree. <laughs> so. And you came up with the quote, and they're like, oh, genius, perfect, and then off we go. We have that aha moment and ta-da. And here's the final result. <laughs> <laughs> and then we set, we set a record for how many times we said mo. <laughs> mo. <laughs> mo. It's just so much fun. It really is. Yeah. Everybody should do that exercise three times a day. Say mo. Mo. <laughs> it, it gets the, the, will, the, you know, what's the bad things uh, get out of you, right? <laughs> the cobwebs all that stuff <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing with this is i to make him look a little like slower i put the one eye like that but even in the in the movie one of his eyes was half shut so <laughs> uh, that's awesome funny stuff yeah and the drool and the, <laughs> i like the, the stitches on the neck uh, you wonder what happened there <laughs> <laughs> Because he is clean shaven. So <laughs> maybe that was a shaven accident. <laughs> <laughs> so he is Frankenstein, but he takes care of himself, you know. <laughs> there we go. So this was our new cartoon based on a woman who married a tree. <laughs> so <laughs> That's right. That started out with a woman marrying a tree. Wow. <laughs> See, there's always good can come out of something. <laughs> our cartoon <laughs> there you go and that is it for yep. uh, last week's whiteboard so that was our whiteboard which now leads us to our next segment today's news break
So Frank, lead us off with today's first news story. Okay, today's news story. Normally, I pick a news story that's not really, uh, uh, has to do with the uh, theme of the day. However, I saw this and I'm going, ah, I have to do this one. So title, Finland Airport has Corona sniffing dogs. Whoa. Does it not make sense? This is awesome. So Finland is launching a program involving dogs that can smell coronavirus. Super wow. cool. Apparently within 10 seconds, they could smell whether or not you have the coronavirus. That, that is really cool. It is. How it works is before. the dog would sniff a sweat sample from you. <clears throat> so there's no contact between you and the dog. You take a swab and you swab your neck and then you stick it in a hole in the wall. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> to in there another room there is a dog there and he sniffs it and you can hear the i don't know maybe the dog roo, 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 and then you run because you have coronavirus right <laughs> yeah, that's crazy but anyway yeah super cool the dogs are very accurate and there's been a few cases where the dog says yeah you have coronavirus they go get tested and it's negative get tested a week later they have it Whoa. He smelled it and it doesn't become evident in the test until a week later. Wow. Super cool. So Finland's oh, first airport doing it. Uh, others are working on it, right? Uh, they're a bit slow to get around to it. Um, How cool would that be if they implemented that worldwide, you know, instead of getting like the snot test and whatever, yeah. have the dogs be so much cheaper faster and apparently more accurate <laughs> that's probably what it started out as the dog's going i ain't sniffing that i'm not licking that <laughs> you know, the nose here <laughs> a dog will lick his butt but he won't smell your snot <laughs> no. wow that's really cool it is super cool i had to share that that's, that's awesome awesome well thank you for that frank that's that's a great one and alex what is your news story for today okay Miguel Gomez, 26, of Allen Park, Michigan, was busted on charges Monday for launching his car over a rising drawbridge, drawbridge Dukes of Hazard style, while he was allegedly high on whippets, according to reports. Police said Gomez was waiting to cross the bridge just as it was opening around 7 p.m. on Wednesday, stepped on the gas, accelerated the car through the security gate into the air, on to the other side. It was actually like the, I know, this is so cool. It's like, who doesn't want to do that? <laughs> it was actually like Dukes of Hazard style. He made it across, said the police dispatcher. Drawbridge, drawbridge operator Andra, Andre Locke said the bizarre scene was a first for him. I looked, I said, he ain't. And then he went over, blew out all four of his tires and crashed into the other gate. <laughs> Wow. Gomez, survived, yeah. Gomez survived the dangerous stunt, wrecked his car, damaged the bridge, and ended up in jail. <laughs> He's suspected of being under the influence of whippets, which the cans of nitrous oxide were found inside his car. Gomez now faces charges including malicious destruction of property, reckless driving, all for taking the terrifying but successful leap. And impersonating Luke Duke. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Wow. <laughs> wow. He made it. He made it. I, he made it. Imagine if yeah. he hadn't. That I mean, that would have been deadly. That is a tragedy. Uh, yeah. uh, but now it's... Yeah. So cool. <laughs> yeah. Way to go, Gomez. <laughs> yeah, what he should have done is painted an old one on his car first. and then. <laughs> I don't think a lot of thought went into it. I think it was more <laughs> spur of the moment. But So that was our news break, which leads now into our expert advice from our resident expert, Frank Hildebrandt. And now, expert advice from, from the expert. Okay, today's expert advice came about because I was in a situation last week. <laughs> I was fixing an exhaust leak on my muffler in the truck. Uh, so that's muffler tape get it rolling around there, you heat it up with a halogen or some kind of, so you get it hot and then you're forming it to make sure it's nice and tight and sucks tight. I did this in the morning, 
have an appointment to go to in about an hour and a half. It's like, oh yeah, I can do this. And then I look at my hands and I am covered in black tar. And I'm like, oh, this is not good. I have an appointment to go to. Try and clean it and nothing is working. All it's doing is smearing. I'm like, wow, this is not good. Think, 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 think. <laughs> so I grabbed some steel wool and some dish soap. So I'm going to self-inflict myself with some roofing tar. This is black, it's tar, it's ugly, it's nasty. <laughs> Just so you know, Frank prefaced that this might not work. If it goes wrong, it's gonna go really wrong, so. Check this out, it's nasty. <laughs> Kids, so do not is, try this at home. Do not play with tar at home. This is as bad as it can get. That is black tar, sticky, ugly. I have my tub of hot water here. And I'm just going to get wet a little bit. Look at this. It just smears all over. This is what happened last week. I was in this state. I'm like, I have to be somewhere in an hour and a half. So... I have my dish soap here. I'm going to squirt a ton. Oh, my wife's going to be angry. I've just gotten full of tar. <laughs> Good thing she doesn't watch every show. <laughs> so getting dish soap all over, and I need a lot more. Because I put way too much tar in my hands. Can you hear the squishy noises? show you now it's not perfect but look at this that was black gooey tar that was smearing all over my hand I have it at about 95% off dish soap hot water steel wool here we are back from expert advice Super I got cleaned up I have my hands that are a good 98% all that tar gone <laughs> my uh <laughs> Just soap needs a little bit of cleaning. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that over there. Frank, were you messing with the dish soap again? <laughs> she likes it when I mimic her voice. Oh, I'm sure she does. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love you, honey. Don't you? <laughs> okay, let's go into our first whiteboard of the day. Welcome everyone to official whiteboard number one of the day. And I had this idea, I was listening to the radio and I had this absurd idea for a band and they were called <laughs> Kathy and the Catheters. <laughs> How terrible of a name that would be. And I had this vision of like you see the all, all the band people are there and they you know they're rock band whatever and they're all Frank had an idea for a punchline and I had an idea for a punchline Uh, the manager saying, I don't know how we got this gig, but we're playing the Shady Acres retirement home. So then it has to be so clear that it's because of their name, right? Kathy and the Catheters. <laughs> I mean, they're both pretty good ideas. when I see it. I know. <laughs> Every man does. <laughs> yeah.
we can draw this whole scenario out, do two different, uh, you know, yeah. word balloons, and then take a vote on it when it's finally done. Yeah. See which one is. Or oh. <laughs> do we reach out to our fans for a caption? <laughs> oh, A or B, or what's your idea? Which is the submission. I like that. That's there we a go. Cool idea. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back, folks. That was our first whiteboard of the day. That was actually leading to our second occurrence of asking our fans for a submission for a punchline, potentially. True. The Pavlov. Uh, they're going to vote for A, B, or submit your own. Yep. And we'll see how that goes. Could get very inventive. <laughs> Could go wrong, and maybe there's some things we won't say on the show. <laughs> we'll see. But I thought the contest was pretty fun. So yeah, it's like they yeah. can do, they can vote for either or do a write-in ballot. I have a better punchline than either one of you guys. So. Yeah, I would I'd love to see that. That would be super yeah. cool. That's cool. So that was the whiteboard. Now we're going to go into today's joke of the day. <laughs> So this husband is sitting in his recliner. He's watching the game and the wife is in the kitchen. She yells to him, honey, do you ever sometimes have a shooting pain across your body? Like somebody's maybe got a voodoo doll and they're stabbing it. It's like, no, that, that never happens. So pause. She says, how about now? <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of couples that actually live that way. <laughs> <laughs> the voodoo doll <laughs> yes i have one couple that's friends and for sure i could picture them saying that to each other Hey guys, so welcome to whiteboard number two of the day. And uh, Frank and I were just brainstorming a little bit and we were thinking of the guy with the Dukes of Hazard jump. Yeah. Cross and we also had had another idea prior to this that we were kind of uh, just playing with. It's that aha moment when you see something or you just know like this is my life's calling. And from here, we're combining the two. And we thought, what would be Evil Knievel's yeah, aha his, moment uh, as a kid? Right, his aha moment. I like that. Aha Evil moment. Knievel's aha moment. As a kid. So, uh, yeah. And uh, he's maybe like probably 12 years old. He's on his banana seat bicycle. <laughs> The kids didn't wear helmets back then, so he's just no. Like, didn't wear helmets. Uh, <laughs> I like him in a striped shirt. Kids are there with ice cream, and he's going to get there somehow. One way or another, he is. He jumps get. the bridge. <laughs> so that, my friends, was whiteboard number two, which leads us to our next segment, which is actually a little out of order today. But we're going to start with 
Did you know? Did you know? Okay, folks, today's Did You Know uh, is about ladybugs. Ladybugs. Now, I brought this up because uh, beginning of spring and s most of the summer was, we're like, where are the ladybugs? Because our raspberry bush is like eaten alive by aphids. And ladybugs eat aphids, right? That's why even some garden centers will sell them. You can buy ladybugs in a bunch. Maybe they sell them by the mouthful. I don't know. <laughs> Keep them warm while you get home. I didn't know the ladybugs ate aphids. That's pretty Yeah, wild. for sure. They're a great aphid eater. Now, uh, they have, uh, uh, if you ever watch them fly, they have a hard shell. Mm -hmm. And then their hard shell rises up like gull wings, and then off they go. They make that sound. It's kind of like... If your gullwing Mercedes had wings, it would be the same thing. And then you would just paint your Mercedes red with spots and call it ladybug. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would be eccentric and uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Anyway, I digress. The Latin name for ladybugs is, oof, hang on a second, uh, Cosinellidae. That's the Latin name for ladybugs. And uh, scientists don't call them ladybugs because they're not bugs. They are in the beetle family. So scientists call them lady beetles. Wow. Yeah. Love you. Yeah. yeah. I know. I was thinking that too. The lady beetles. <laughs> lady beetles. Now the English, this is where it gets interesting. English call them lady birds. So this came about because Mary, mother of Jesus, is often painted and depicted having a red cloak. And the most common ladybug in England has seven spots. So common in the uh, Catholic uh, religion and such is they refer to the seven joys and seven sorrows of Mary. Mm. So here you have something in red with seven spots, and so they called it. Uh, sorry, I have to back up because they call Mary Our Lady. So initially, they were called Our Lady Birds. That's what they call ladybugs. Matt just shortened wow. up to ladybirds. That's what they're called in England. In case you ever go there, you have to know they're called ladybirds. I still birds. don't understand from that the bird part. That doesn't really explain why they call it the ladybird. <sighs> well, now you got to crawl into the mind of the English here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they uh, didn't want to say bugs, you know, uh, they're talking about Our Lady. So Our Lady Bird. Bird was more respectful than bugs. Yeah, yeah, I I'm guessing that's what they were after. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. So a defense mechanism they have is called reflex bleeding. I know that's one of your reflexes when you get hit, you bleed, right? <laughs> <laughs> so reflex bleeding. Uh, this is an alkaloid toxin exuded through the joints of their exoskeleton and it tastes bad. <laughs> so any birds or whatever that uh, they don't want to eat ladybugs just tastes horrible. But uh, quite a few spiders have figured out how to digest them. So if you have spider webs by your plants, get rid of those because that will trap the ladybugs. Mm. Ladybugs are our friends. Leave the spider webs up high or whatever for the other bugs. But, uh, and that is today's Did You Know About Ladybugs. Very cool, Frank. Oh, thank you. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> well, this now leads us to our final segment, which is related to the ladybird, ladybug, and that is today's story time with Jason Statham. And now, boys and girls, it's story time with Jason Statham. Hello, 
children, I'm Jason Statham. Welcome back to Storytime. Hi Jason, what's uh, your story about today? Today's story is about what we call the ladybird. You know them better as ladybugs. Oh, I love ladybugs. There we go. Ladybird, ladybird, fly away home. Your house is on fire and the children are gone. All except one, and that's little Anne. For well, she has crept under the warming pan. What was that? What do you mean? Uh, 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 I love ladybugs. You, you killed them all. Uh, uh. Well, little Anne is still alive. <laughs> She's under the warming pan, you know. Oh, but the rest of them are all gone. They are all gone. But don't you know, nursery rhymes were always a little bit on the dark side. That's why I like them. Oh, wow. I'm never going to be the same. Well, that's it for today's story time. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> no. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Till next time, kids. Sleep well. And be careful in case your house is on fire. <laughs> well, thank okay. you once again, Jason Statham, for choosing to do your community service with us and, you know, serving the kids. Yeah, serving the kids and messing up their, traumatizing them for life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nursery rhymes were dark, man. <laughs> Those were dark. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. They had to they find some them. way to get through all the horror, right? So. Yeah. During the bubonic plague, they had some nursery rhymes, you know. The 1918 flu epidemic, they had nursery rhymes. And during World War II and World War I, that's where all the nursery rhymes come from. Yeah. Yeah. It's a coping mechanism. That's right. <laughs> Do you ever notice coping mechanism. they usually were... were destroying kids in all of them or, or horrifying kids like did they yeah. not like children back in the day <laughs> nobody lived happily ever after no <laughs> it was always awful always awful the wolf eating grandma and trying yeah. to yeah it's like terrible yeah. stuff man terrible stuff but as long as you say it in a nice way i guess i guess that makes it fun <laughs> it's all in the delivery it's on the delivery man and nobody delivers it quite like jason statham that's right he would call him the delivery man <laughs> the delivery man the transporter <laughs> right. well they call him that now because <laughs> i said it that's awesome cool, cool brother well, so ends episode number 11 of the abnormal hour that went by fast it really did oh. yeah so uh, that must guys. mean we're getting better, right? I think we're getting better. I think we're getting better. <laughs> so thank you guys for being a part of this today. And uh, yeah, till next week, same bat chime, same bat channel. Yeah, yeah. See ya. Should we come up with a better ending or is that okay? Did you say bat chime? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Same bat chime, same bat channel. You can't make fun that much, though, because what was it on the Thunder Brothers when you were just like, I think he stales the snakes, <laughs> the snakes, right. the snakes, the snakes, or whatever. the snakes. <laughs>
And now we're leaving. We gotta go.